Hello, hello English readers. Welcome, welcome to this new live read along of Mrs. Dalloway, the adaptation of Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Uh, I'm Lydie Bureau and I'm an English teacher in France. I'm also the founder of Books and Co uh, of Books, um, of Lydie's Book Club. Sorry, in which I host live readings of adaptations of classics of um, English literature like this one, or um, I also do readings of contemporary novels uh, of the English literature or the American literature. And I tend to prioritize novels written by women. Also, once a week in my book club, we meet once a week to um, discuss the readings that uh, the chapters or the um, readings, because in this novel there are no um, chapters, we discuss the book and the, cha the chapters read over the week and also about books in general and um, English literature or um, learning English. So today we are reading section nine of the, of the novel, which means uh, that we're going to read page 62 to, 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 to let me check. Um, 62 uh, to 70, uh, no, to 65, 62 to 65, sorry. Hi, hi guys. Um, and if you want to know more about Virginia Woolf, you haven't started uh, reading the book or um, you know about Virginia Woolf, but you don't know uh, you want you would like to know more and you would like to know more about the novel before getting started um, with the reading of the book, then I invite you to listen or watch my podcast episode 17 called An Introduction to Virginia Woolf and Mrs. Dalloway that just came out today so you can watch it just after this live or put this live put the replay if you're watching this then on replay you can um um read you you can um listen to it and then get started with the reading so i don't know i don't know uh kitty if you did you get the time to listen to the podcast or uh did you see that uh, the podcast came out but I think you were present uh, when I recorded the podcast uh, because this is a live podcast episode so uh, I recorded this episode maybe three weeks ago and uh, maybe you were I think you attended the live but anyway it's available to listen on Spotify or watch on YouTube. So before I get started with the reading of section nine, I'm going to do a quick recap on section eight, which is the part of the book that we read yesterday. And it was all about um it was all about septimus and his wife rezia so septimus warren smith is a war veteran yes hours that i heard the episode oh great nice so um Septimus is a 30-year-old veteran from the First World War and um, he came back uh, from the war 
as a very different man. And we learn in this section that he, when the war ended, he was in Italy. And there he also learned that his friend um, Evans, um, an officer in the army, they were very close to each other, um, died uh, just before the war and before the end of the war, sorry. And um, he realized that at the announcement of his of his friend's death, he couldn't feel any emotions. Um, and he didn't even um, cry for his friend, the death of, after the death of his friend. And uh, we learn that after... Uh, that's a little bit, um, I realize that's section seven, I think, uh, because section eight is more about the doctor. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm doing a little bit more um, of recap here. I think that was seven, yeah. So he realizes that he doesn't feel any, any emotion and, but he keeps on living and he is staying at this Italian, um, in this inn, um, in this Italian hotel, um, kind of, um, an inn is sort of um, um, an old, um, like an hotel, like a bed and breakfast kind of place. And it was owned by uh, an innkeeper and um, he had two daughters and they were making hats and he fell in, well, he didn't really fell in love, but he got engaged. He got caught up in this um, family and um, he got engaged without probably even realizing it uh, by, uh, he was engaged to one of, the daughter so the youngest Rizia and they got married um so it's only a couple years later that um Rizia um kind of noticed that there was something wrong with it with her husband she wanted to uh, start a family have children but it 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 uh, wasn't happening so she felt very lonely, uh, completely abandoned by the doctors as well, who were not able to understand her husband. So uh, there is this doctor called Dr. Holmes, who um, is not really helpful for him. Her husband just needs to have a hobby, play football or go out in fresh air um because as it says and it is repeated many times in the book uh, there is nothing uh, the matter uh so uh i can't remember exactly um the phrase but it's the fact that there is nothing to worry about and Rizia still worries, so she is going to consult another, uh, a more renowned uh, doctor called Sir William Bradshaw. And this man is much more interested in money than really um, healing his patients and finding really the issue with the there it's patience uh and he is um quite in a hurry when they go to its uh, his office or, or his um um practice 
he is not very patient. He doesn't even um, listen, pay, take the time to listen to Septimus, who is trying to formulate a sentence, but takes a lot of time. He, he is not able to properly express himself. And Sarah Williams, uh, William instead is going to talk to um, his wife, Septimus's wife, Rezia, and he's going to uh, recommend her to take her husband to a nursing home where he would be taken care of and and looked after. But Rezia is quite vicious uh, towards this doctor and um, she doesn't really like him as well. So that was um, chapter, um, section eight, in which uh, we uh, learn, we follow uh, the couple at um, Miss at Sir William Williams' um, practice, or uh, how is it called? Practice or um, is yeah his office. And um, yeah, this is where we left off yesterday. Okay, so I'm going to take a little sip of tea. It's actually infusion. <laughs> anyway, I hope you also take the time to have something to drink as well to appreciate the reading. Okay, let's go. Striking together every quarter of an hour, the clocks of Harley Street divided and controlled the June day. Remember, this story is only happening in one day. So it's now quarter, every quarter. Uh, no, uh, what time is it now? It's about... Half past one, yeah. So time marched on until a clock in Oxford Street announced that it was half past one. Hugh Whitbread was at Lady Brut Bruton, Bruton, uh, Brut Lady Bruton's front door with a bunch of red flowers in his hand for he never failed to remember the manners of the perfect English gentleman. Lady B Bruton preferred Richard Dalloway, of course, who arrived a moment later, but she would let no one criticise her, her poor Hugh. She could never forget his kindness. He had been extraordinarily kind, though exactly when that, though exactly when that had been, she could no longer remember. There was something she needed there. There, uh, there was something she needed their help with, but they would eat first, of course. She laid used flowers down beside her plate, and the food was carried silently, silently in by white caped servants. She must wait until the coffee was served before asking for their help. Lady Bruton reminded herself. Do you know who's in town? said Lady Bruton suddenly, as you helped himself to a large amount of chicken. Our old friend Peter Walsh. Ooh. They all smiled. Peter Walsh? Richard Dalloway liked the poor man and would be very pleased to see him. And all three remembered the same thing. How Peter had been so, so much in love with Clarissa. But then he had been rejected, had gone to work in India and made a terrible mess of things. Peter Walsh had been in love with Clarissa, which was, Richard thought. Straight after lunch, he would go home and tell her in his way that he loved her feel a little bit jealous here or it's feeling that um, 
Maybe uh, should say something to something to his wife. Yes, Peter Walsh has come back," said Lady Bruton. He had returned, beaten and successful, to their safe shore. But it was impossible to help him. There was some fault in his character. Hugh Whitbread. Remember, Hugh Whitbread is um, the very snob. Um, friend of Clarissa that Peter Walsh doesn't like. Hugh Ritbread could certainly mention Peter's name to the heads of government the heads of government office. It could write letters, but it would not lead to anything permanent because of Peter's character. He's in trouble with some women, said Lady Bruton, and of course they all guessed that so he's kind of have a reputation however we shall hear the whole story for peter himself from peter himself she said wanting to leave the subject now for she had very little interest in peter walsh nothing mattered more at this moment than the project she had begun and the letter she wished to have published about it in the times news newspaper no one wrote letters to the Times as admirably as Hugh Whitbread. So if he wrote for her and Richard advised her, uh, she, sure, she was sure to get it right. But Hugh was very slow to finish eating and the coffee would not be brought until he had finished. She was getting impatient. At last, Hugh was finished, the coffee was served, and Lady Britain's paper were fetched. Hugh slowly and carefully made corrections with his fine silver pen. And when he finally read out the letter, Lady Bruton felt certain that it was a great success. Lunch and, lunch and letter writing over, Lady Bruton led them to the hall, where they looked where they took their gloves from the table and offered they th their thanks. We shall see you at our party tonight, Richard said. The letter writing was done. She needed their help no more. Lady Bruton stood stiff and splendid again. She might come or she might not, she said. Standing at her door, very handsome, very upright. So we understand here why she wanted Richard instead of Clarissa. Remember, Clarissa got very jealous about the fact, uh, the fact, sorry, that uh, she wasn't invited for lunch, but her husband, yes. So that was the reason. Her guests left and Millicent Britton went up to her room to lie on her sofa to rest, not to sleep. She was not asleep, just sleepy or heavy, sleepy and heavy, as if lying in a flower filled, filled, filled. <coughs> she was not as, um, as if lying in a flower filled, filled in the sunshine. On this hot June day, with the bees going round and round, she always went back to those fields in Devon, riding Patty, her horse, with her brothers. And there were her father and mother in the garden under the trees, drinking tea as she crawled back through the bushes after their games, so as not to be seen. And it's the end of section nine. It's a very short reading today. I hope that um, you still found it interesting, even though it was a very short one. Um, so here, not much really, except the fact not much... Uh, we don't we're not learning much information um except that um
Lady, a, a, yeah, Lady Bur Bruton um, wanted to write, uh, wanted Hugh Woodbread and Richard Dalloway to be there at her at her lunch uh, to help her with a letter. So you see here that there is no such invitation by the kindness of her heart. Is there was a meaning behind, um, and she she had something to ask them um, for. at lunchtime uh, for uh, for this um, invitation. Um, it wasn't um, simply just uh, to be, I mean, it's a nice gesture, but there was an intention behind um, the invitation. And because she needed them, basically, more than, uh, and also, Gossip, gossiping a little bit you see that um how she brings uh the information about peter walsh and the fact that she's insisting on repeating that um peter walsh was um indeed in love with uh clarissa knowing that richard dalloway was there um so you can see that um she's um uh, trying to i don't know um be the troublemaker i don't know but uh, maybe she's um, yeah, she, it seems like she's the kind of character that likes to gossip about other people and make also um, react also the other people present in the room, like Richard Dolloway. And you can see that it works because Richard is thinking then, oh, yeah, he was in love with her. Um and they might still be in love. So when I come home, I must, um, I must remind my wife that I love her. Or I have to do a gesture. I have to make a gesture to prove, uh, to remind her that I love her and uh, do something. Um, so, um, so there is a little bit of um, hmm, not very um, strong feeling of jealousy like Peter Walsh. Or you can see that when, uh, if you remember when there was this chapter in which Peter Walsh uh, remembered his the first time that he met Richard Dalloway and instantly. He knew that um, Clarissa was um, in love with him or she would choose him as her husband instead of him and how jealous um, he felt. Um, and here, Richard is not as... Uh, strong in his feelings... But there is something like, hmm, that makes him react, learning about the fact that, um, or remembering, I don't know, was had been in love way. Yeah, I don't know if he knew before, but um, but at least it um, uh, worked. I mean, uh, lady. Bruton um, information make made um, Richard Dalloway somehow uh, react, and uh, he to yeah to declare his love to to his wife. Um, again, or at least to just. 
um, reassert his love for his wife. So I, um, yeah, I would love to know how you thought, what were your thoughts on this chapter, although there aren't much uh, information. So I hope tomorrow we'll have more to talk about in chapter 10. Yeah, it's much, yeah, it's a bit longer it's um than uh, than today so i'm sure there are going to be more information and more to talk about right so um thank you again for attending this live and thank you for watching the replay and uh, this video thank you so much and if you enjoyed it please um click on the little thumb to say that you enjoyed it and if you have any questions or any comments please leave your comments in the video below the the video you're welcome thank you Katie for being here I hope you enjoyed this live and make sure that you uh, subscribe to the book club if you want to be part of this literary journey and improve your English and talk about books. I wish you a beautiful end of the day and I will see you tomorrow for the reading of section nine and uh, section 10, section 10. Bye-bye.